Welcome. I invite you to join me in a 10 or 12 minute practice of embodied yoga. You don't have to have had any experience with yoga before. This may be your first time, or perhaps yoga is something that you've appreciated in your life. One thing that yoga might help you do is to come to the present moment. And right now, as we're all managing the stress of being quarantined, being isolated, um, being in our own spaces, some of you might be living with others and some of you might be on your own, it can be very common for your thoughts to go elsewhere, for your thoughts to move ahead, for your thoughts to move back, for your thoughts to be anywhere but in the present moment. So one of the benefits of yoga, perhaps for you, might be being in this space, even for brief snippets of time, 10, 12 minutes. Um, and it's a practice, so you don't have to be great at it the first time you try this. You are welcome to, um, to use this in the mornings or in the evenings. And this particular practice is one that is done maybe seated, seated on a chair. I happen to be sitting on a stool. I don't have a back to this stool. But you may be seated, seated rather in a, in a chair that has a back that maybe you'd like to rest into. I offer this practice even if you have challenges, physical challenges. It will be one that um, may be accessible. And if anything that I offer does not feel like uh, either you are comfortable trying this um, you don't feel that your body might move in that way, you are welcome to pause and not participate in that particular form. So the choice is always yours in this practice. Um, you will notice that I myself am working through an injury, and so if I offer movements of arms, you may notice that one arm travels a little bit further than the other. And this is part of our human condition, and yoga is available even in the space where we may not feel um, as though all parts of us are moving in a way that we would like. And so I welcome you to find a place to sit, to come to a space that might feel supportive to you. So if you're in a chair, make sure that you have a little bit of room for movement. So if you have a chair with arms, you might want to be aware that those arms might impact you from moving. And that's okay. That's okay. Um, sometimes people enjoy practicing yoga. Um, and listening to the practice as opposed to participating. So that is also an option for you. So as you come into your seat, you're welcome to take a moment to notice your feet if they're touching the ground. Um, you might not be able to see my feet in this moment, but one thing you might do is, is lift onto your toes and back to your heels. So one way of noticing your feet might be to rock your weight towards your toes, lifting your heels a little bit or a lot. And you might do this one leg at a time, one foot at a time. So that's one way. Another is that you keep your heels on the ground, you keep your feet on the ground, and maybe you are lifting your toes, lifting and dropping your toes. So that may be a way that you notice the ground beneath your feet. Know that you are welcome to keep as much space or as little space between your feet as you'd like. It's your choice. And another place that you might begin to notice is how you're sitting in this chair. So maybe it might be helpful to take a moment to shift your weight. Now you might choose to shift forward and back, creating a rocking motion. Maybe you're choosing to rock and maybe noticing the way that your weight shifts on the seat. Your movement may be forward and back, or if it feels useful, you might bring some circular movement. And the size of your movements is up to you. So maybe your movement is slow and small. Maybe you're choosing to bring more movement to your torso. And if you happen to be circling, know that you can move in either direction. So your choice may be moving in either direction, up to you. So maybe you're staying with a forward and backwards movement, or maybe you're choosing to create some circles. Taking maybe another two or three movements, your choice. You can always stay longer. If something feels particularly useful and you want to stay a little bit longer, you're welcome to do so. Eventually, you might come back to your center, back to your neutral space, whatever your starting space was. 
And so another place that you're welcome to bring movement might be to your head and neck. One way that you are welcome to try movement could be a lowering and a lifting of your chin. And so maybe you're choosing to lower and lift. And it's possible that as you bring movement, you might notice some mm, sensation in the back of your neck. Know that you can create movement as small or as large as feels useful to you, so your choice. So this is one way of moving, is a lowering and a lifting. Another type of movement might be half circles. So with a half circle, your chin might move from side to side. So that's another option. You can choose either of those movements, taking them at your pace. And you might find that you prefer to keep your eyes open through the practice, or you might find that you might keep your eyes closed. That's always a choice you're welcome to make. I will offer cues for each of the movements so that you are welcome to practice this by listening and then moving your body. There is no perfect version of any one of these forms. Taking maybe a few more movements of your neck, possibly coming back to neutral as you're ready. And another space that you might want to move could be your shoulders. <clears throat> so one way of moving your shoulders could be a lifting and a lowering. And so you are welcome here to take this movement fast or slow. So this is an up and down, kind of a, a linear movement, a lifting and a lowering. So this is one way of bringing movement, maybe noticing how much you can lift, how much you can lower. Another type of option would be a circling of your shoulders. And you are welcome to move in either way. So maybe lifting and lowering, maybe a circling in either direction. So possibly a way to bring movement to your shoulders. And always know you can come back to neutral when you feel complete with the form. So even if I keep moving, if it feels most useful for you to come back to a form of stillness or adjusting your body in another way, you're welcome to do so. So when you're ready, returning back to your neutral space, if it's helpful to shift your weight, you're welcome to do so. Um, perhaps a movement with your hands. So your hands, there's a couple of ways that you might choose to move your hands and your wrists. And one of them would be a flexing and a pointing. So you might, and here you can have your wrist facing up or down. So your choice could be an opening, a closing. So kind of like you might do with your feet, a flexing and a pointing. Another type of movement might be circling your wrists. So here, um, an option is to circle with your palms, your fingers extended. So one way of bringing movement. Another way might be that you like to curl your fingers in, creating some movement. So bringing movement maybe to some joints, maybe to some joints within your body. As you're ready, coming back to the center space, maybe for two more movements, so possibly for two movements here before we complete this short chair practice. So one movement might be a forward leaning or a forward folding. So a couple of ways to do this. One might be that you place your hands on your legs and you lean in. So you may find that your movement is a couple of inches shifting from upright to forward, you may find that you wish to place your hands down towards the ground or to another spot on your legs. So your choice of how your forward movement looks. Um, sometimes movement can be helpful if you move into this and hold and stay in this space, maybe noticing any sensation in your spine or perhaps your hips. At other times, it can be helpful to move in and out. So sometimes rhythm, creating a rhythm of movement can be helpful for your nervous system, can give you something to 
kind of pay attention to your rhythm. So you certainly can move at the rhythm that I am, and you're also welcome to create your own rhythm. So maybe you're creating movement, maybe you're choosing to lean in and to pause in this form. So you can choose what works best for you. Remembering to breathe as you're moving in your own way, no special manner of breathing in this particular practice. Through your open mouth, through your nose. And when you feel like you have created enough movement here, another version is to lean onto your forearms. You're welcome to come back to seated, perhaps for one last um, particular form. This one might be a twist. So there's a few ways to come into a twist. One of them is to twist your head and neck, letting the twist be from um, your neck on up. So maybe you're choosing to turn as though you were looking over one shoulder. So this is one way of creating a twist. Another might be that you place your hand on your opposite leg and you turn your torso. So perhaps you choose, if you'd like, to twist to one direction, You may notice that you can adjust this twist coming forward a bit or turning a bit more. So if, if this impacts your ability to breathe, know that you can take the action that you need to allow your breath to be as full as possible. And if you've turned in one direction and would like, you're welcome to turn into the other, coming back through center. And here, a choice of either turning your head, that being your twist, or the other option is one hand on your leg and turning towards the side or the back. I tend to keep my hand on the surface on the chair as um, a place to hold on to. So you're welcome to do that if it's useful. Remembering that there is no perfect version of this. Adjusting your spine so that you might have breath that moves through your body. So you are welcome to be aware of that. Coming back to your center when you're ready. And as you return to the center space, um, in a yoga practice, there's usually, usually a period of resting at the end of a practice. And I'd like to offer that as well here, maybe two minutes worth of resting. And so what that might involve is coming to a seat that feels stable. If you happen to be um, on the ground, you're always welcome to lie back. If you're seated in a chair, you might make sure that you feel supported. That might mean leaning back into the back of the chair if that's useful. And this might be a time to notice your own self, your own body as it is here. You may have sensations that you're feeling. Maybe the movement of your body has created some sensations in your muscles, um, in parts of your body, maybe none at all. And both of them are perfectly normal. So as you're in this space, you might notice that you're breathing. You might keep your eyes open or closed. And if focusing on breath does not feel useful or feels difficult, you are welcome instead to take your gaze and to notice something in your room. Piece of furniture, piece of art, your dog, your cat, and maybe Maybe for this moment, pausing, perhaps noticing your breathing, perhaps noticing something in your line of sight. Maybe taking a couple of breaths here that you're aware of. So noticing, we breathe all the time and we don't often notice that our body is doing this most amazing thing, breathing in and breathing out. And then what I'd like to do here is to time one minute where I will be seated here with you in one minute where you won't hear me speaking, but I will be seated with you in resting. So your resting position, whatever feels most useful, and I'll go ahead and start timing that for us now.
And as you're ready, if your eyes have been closed, you might bring them back to an open position, um, maybe slowly, maybe beginning to notice what's in your space. Maybe coming back to be aware of this moment, this time, if it's helpful to bring any movement to any parts of your body, your feet, your back, your hands, maybe doing so. So thank you for practicing some chair yoga with me today. Chair yoga that was mostly about the upper part of our torso. Wishing you peace.